Hello and welcome to the show. My guest today is originally from Israel, but he's been living in Germany for the last 12 years. Samuel Schiedem is a museum educator at three institutions here in Berlin, including the Jewish Museum. He is a campaigner for human rights and also works tirelessly for peace in the Middle East in a very particular and interesting way. And finally, he's a philosopher, having studied philosophy at Heidelberg University. Welcome to the show. Um, let's start by finding out about your background, because you're from is Israel, but you yourself have said you're not Jewish, you're not Christian, you're not Muslim. So what are you? I mean, do you not like to be put into a box? Uh, or well, I was put in the box in the box once, you know, but um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a different, a different case. But um, it's, um, uh, you know, I don't refer to the um, to my faith uh, by the word uh, Druze, because Druze is a word that was given for this minority by the uh, by the time of uh, the Muslim majority to to put this minority in a kind of a bad light uh, that like betrayed the Islamic uh, uh, or, uh, belief. Uh, so I, to the world, it, yes. it's kind of known as yeah. the Druze yeah, it's this religion or faith? Faith. Faith, okay. Faith. So I call myself, I just practice unity uh, because the Druze refer to themselves as al-muwahidun, which means those who believe in the one. So I practice unity, which means for me, um, I cannot disconnect um, the religions from one each other. So for me, it is, I would say, I combine all those three. Um, is it, is it, and that's what I want to, is, that a, is it a combination then of the three religions. <laughs> I, I, I'm sort of feeling, to be careful, I don't want to be rude about your faith, but uh, I think people out there, really, and I myself, I, when I, I, I had to look it up, and I actually thought it was, I thought Druzes were Christians, but they're not. Well, you know, the, the, the Druze faith, or the faith in the one is, or unity, um, refer to the to the question is, if it's possible that God could appear as a human being. And since we, the only thing that we as people who believe in God um, know about God is that he's one. I mean, any other thing that is being told about God, it is just an image of God that was given by human beings. So, and we cannot define the will of God. Um, and uh, it's possible that God could have appeared as a human being and, and the Druze faith um, uh, said, well, if it's God spoke to Moses through a burning bush, a tree, so he could speak to human beings through a living human being, which is considered to be a logical, um, a logical development. So, um, so in, in because of this perspective, a lot of people would say, theologically, the Druze are part of the Christian thought. Um, so, and there is a lot of things common, but the way I put it together is, um, you know, the Jewish thought brought to our creation, to our lives, um, a kind of a wisdom of an order uh, with it. And Christianity brought the, I would say, uh, the love to that order. So just like wisdom and love. And, and I think Islam brought also a unique uh, um, uh, addition to it, just like talking about um, social justice. So if you combine those three together, wisdom, love, and social justice, you will get the Druze faith. It's wonderful. It's taking the best bits, you know. Yes, yeah. it's just like so. And so it's very, very comfortable. Very comfortable. You mentioned it's a minority. It's actually, and and it, you come from Isfia in the in the in the north of Israel, and is that where the Druze minority is centered? Well, Isfia is. Um, Isfia, sorry. Isfia. It's just like um, in, it's in, it's also it's a biblical uh, place, and it uh, goes back to. Um, uh, mentioned also in different parts of history, uh, but the Arabic uh, term is Asfia, 
and um, which is um, located on the on the Mount Carmel, and um, is um, the majority lives there. Is we call it. It's just for the terms, for all the, those who knows the word Druze, we keep up with the word Druze. The majority is a Druze majority. Mm -hmm. But in SVR, we have also Buddhists, Jewish, Christians, Muslims, uh, all mixed religions living in one place in Israel, which is untypical, actually, for Israel. Mm -hmm. So we have also Messianic Jews who lives in SVR. Yeah. They cannot live anywhere. They cannot live in Jerusalem. So for me, SVR is is that Jerusalem, that, oh, I see. Okay. that place. Oh, I want to show you a picture. <laughs> That's you and? Uh, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a photo of, um, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't explain that, I'm sorry. It's just like my two brothers who's yeah. actually in this photo. And it's, it's always that people mix us. Oh, wait, yeah. it, you're not in that photo. I'm not in that photo. Oh, I see. That's your two brothers. Yeah, they're my oh, two I didn't brothers. Know that. But but one of them is just like the one you see you had with the the, the red color on it, on it. It's just like um, the brother that is everybody. We you know they switch us like uh, like we look very 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 similar, and that. Yeah. So that's that's that's. Well, we I must have it. one of you. A little later. Oh, yeah, it's... Slight, I mean, you, a, a rebellious time in your life, perhaps. Although I think you're still quite a bit of a rebel. We'll find out the rest of the programme. <laughs> but... Yeah, those two guys that are in the photo are very, very great. But are you on the right? I'm, I'm on the right. Yes, um, I thought so. My producer thought you were on the left, actually. But <laughs> no, no, I said, no, that's him on the right. I'm on the right. Yeah. And, and um, those are two, two good friends of mine. And, um, and they were also... Um, we had a band. We tried to have a band, you know, we were just like, I don't know how to, to define yeah. us, yeah. but we were just taking texts out of, uh, uh, like, uh, for uh, bands like uh, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, The Doors, trying to put them in, in I Arabic had, I, words. I, 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 I mean, I did the same bit, bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I had a band based on cream, but we won't go on into that. It's yeah, terrible. No, so, no, it was yeah. terrible. Also from our you, I know that you, um, you actually got thrown out of your school, though, didn't you, at one point, or expelled from school? Yes, yes. But, yes. like all good Israelis, you had to go to the army, or did you go voluntarily to the army, or did you have to go? And the Druze minority do everything okay. in, 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 in Israel, mm -hmm. which is considered to be part of a, what is called a being, um, trying to be um, um, a person who goes on and respects the place he lives in. So it's something that is very, uh, very unique in the, in the, in the Druze faith. Um, and to, um, to protect is something also that belongs to every person. Now, the fact that the Druze served the Israeli army is something that is rooted in this, in this, in this, um, in this, in this belief of, of, uh, of being integrated in a part. Well, now, and, and if I may say, you were very successful, if that's the right <laughs> word, you were the first ever uh, Druze tank commander in the Israeli army, but I know it didn't stay that way. I mean, another one, one more picture of you Obviously, the time there, the short haircut, but if I may say, not looking happy. I won't describe my time in the army as a happy time. Um, you know, put a musician or put somebody who is like have grown up in, in such an open sphere of accepting others and going up into military where you have to carry a gun, it's a bad reality. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you, if you are Druze, Christian, Muslim, or Jews, um, carrying a gun is for uh, somebody in the age of 18 years old is not a healthy thing. Mm -hmm. It's something that have to, uh, have to change in the Middle East. Um, so it's not a happy time for me. At the, and you at ended up in military prison, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't refer to myself as a, as a man who, who, who want to make a military career. I don't believe in guns and I don't believe in, uh, in power. 
And I, if I had to choose between protecting myself by shooting other person, I would rather, I would rather die than, than doing such a thing. Um, so I, I don't believe in all this, but I had to, and I did my duty to the place mm. where I lived as a, as a, as a person who believed in uh, equal rights and equal citizenship. Now, since that the Middle East doesn't have the perspective of citizenship, it is all countries in the Middle East um, doesn't have what we call a citizenship. Um, so um, the minority, if the Druze minority lives in Israel, um, um, there is no one guarantee and they still, until today, didn't get equal rights in Israel. Mm -hmm. So I, with all the love that I have to the place, I don't think this is a place that I would, uh, with, with my understanding today of uh, where I see the world today, uh, that I would choose to live in. Mm. Thank you for that. We'll talk some more in a minute, but let's find out more about my guest's current life here in Berlin. We met up with him at Karame, which is a cultural club for young Arabic people here. But first we see him at work at the Museum Topo Topography of Terror, which documents the Nazi horrors of the Second World War. synagogues was set in fire, uh, people were being killed in open streets. Dictatorship is uh, man-made, and uh, so um, my agenda is to be an active person, to ask a question and be critical. Thank you. I'm from Australia and the tours really opened my eyes to the German experience of the Second World War. They enforced my, my, maybe my, my perspective to fight more against the totalitarian area. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. Say it's not very far away from 1945, you know, it's not far. <laughs> I live nearby and I'm always walking past, but I had no idea what really took place here. And this exhibition gives you a chance to find out what really happened. Democracy means not to sit down and just like criticize it, but just to be an active and do something and get to those who are feeling that they are being discriminated and just trying to take a look at what is going on. And because I come from a minority, I am, I am interested in what is going on with minorities because I, you know, I discover myself sometimes and I realize, okay, it's not only about them, it's also about me. I still find the kind of thinking that goes on here is amazing and so far in advance from all these political discussions about you know, immigrants or Muslims in Germany. The Germans still have the problem to say the word Jewish. For them, saying the word Israeli would switch over to the word Jewish. And I'm just trying step by step to give um, uh, to give their to give their them a space that their life and their background and their tragedy is something that interests me. It is a long journey. I wouldn't say there is kind of one answer, and I don't believe in answers. You don't believe in answers. Not in such in political answers, you know. I believe in education. Yeah, and education is 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 not a not, not an output. An education is a process, and uh, so I I believe in in, in peace, and um, like anything else, peace have to be taught, um, and it's and it's um, 
And it's the responsibility not of, I don't know who came up with this idea that you make a peace agreement. You know, it's, I think it's something very British. Uh, <laughs> <Really>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we um, like agreements. Yeah, you just like have an agreement that, uh, now I think it's, it's just like peace is about life, peace is about education, peace is about activity. And peace is about taking responsibility of your, your survivment and your surrounding. And, um, and peace is something that you find in yourself. Um, this is where it starts. So I had to go up to myself and to find peace in myself. Um, and, um, and being as a person who work in a museums, like, you know, those very important museums in Germany, um, who speaks Arabic. Um, um, I, you know, for my, my colleagues, I, I'm, I'm the only Arabic speaking museums educator. Um, um, I haven't met another person yet, but I would love to. Um, so I think it's a big responsibility that, you, that I carry with me, uh, especially if you speak the, Ar the Arabic language. And, and um, you speak he Hebrew. And I speak Hebrew. Yeah, and, and, and in an article I read about you, you said that when Israeli tourists visiting the museum find where you're from, which we've heard about, yeah. first they're shocked and then excited. So why are they shocked and then why are they excited? <laughs> well, um, uh, the, the journalist who wrote this is... Um, it's quite an interesting person, but I, I could see it from his perspective. But I would say it's also something that is the visitors, when they come to the Jewish Museum, they expect a Jewish person who telling them about Jewish history, mm -hmm. um, especially... So they're shocked. So, yeah, if, okay. I don't put myself like, you know, I'm not part of the exhibition, but people are curious. People want to know who is telling them all this. So they ask me, where are you from? because they're very careful just to say, ask if you are Jewish or not. So they would ask me, where are you from? And I say, I'm from Asfia. And they would say, it's like, Asfia is Druze. And everybody who comes up from Israel mostly know that, okay. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they're like, oh, well, it doesn't, doesn't go on with what we know. It doesn't go on with what we thought. So there is a kind of a you know, challenge uh, and just like on their perspective, who have access to this history. And they are pleased about it because, we, because most, most of the visitors say, well, it's a nice thing that, no, it's a nice thing that somebody who's not Jewish is actually deals with this stuff and, 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 and asks the question about what is the Jewish identity and goes on and, 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 goes on and study about Jewish culture in, in Europe. Uh, but there is also something unpleasant in it. There's something that is not, oh. yeah, there's something like, I would say, having this idea that you have to be Jewish in order to deal with Jewish history is something that I think it's wrong. It's interesting. Um, I should mention, you've mentioned, you're not, it, it, we've mentioned the Jewish Museum, but you're in the three sort of major museums in Berlin yes. that deal with the Holocaust and all the, I mean, the Jewish Museum doesn't just deal with that, but you're in the, the museum, the topography of terror, which documents the Nazi terror of the 30s and 40s. And you also work in the uh, memorial of, uh, of the murdered Jews in Europe, this wonderful memorial next to the Brandenburg Gate, and there's a museum underneath. Um, and you're a museum educator, so you're the ideal person to ask a, a, a serious question. Do you think Germans and Germany have dealt with this part of their history well? Whew. It's a big question, I know, but you're the man to ask, really. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> um, um, I have to put up this question in, in you know, different parts. Let's just talk about the German government and German politics and the society and what is going on today. So, um, you know, I don't believe in, in what we call collective uh, um, uh, guiltness. So it's always individual. And I think memory is something individual. So I'd rather talk about rememberness and the culture is connected to it is something that is, from my understanding, quite individual. So I, I, don't, I have a problem with that collective. 
of the, of the whole Germans. Um, so I, I question that. I question that. What does, what does memory mean? How it has been integrated in our daily life situation? So I think that the German government have done in, 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 in supporting cultural museums like this is been doing well been doing very good if you compare it to different countries in Europe. Uh, but Europe have a problem of increasing anti-Semitism, an increase in racism, an increase in actually hatred to Islam. So there is, there is questions, a serious question that we have to ask if what you concern, uh, rememberness, and what does it mean how to be integrated in our daily life situation. And I think it's very problematic to talk about the issue once you have a process in Germany going on of the same ideology, because of the same ideology, a neo-Nazi groups killed uh, in Germany, um, not far away from, you know, from the time that we're sitting here, uh, and there's a process going on in, in Munich about it. So the reality is 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 horrible, and 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 um, and more than fifty percent according to the statistic that I've read about uh, three months ago, and uh, Spiegel, uh, said that... Um, in Spiegel magazine. Yeah, in Spiegel magazine, yeah. 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 Uh, said that um, more than 50%, I think it's about 52 or 57% of um, Germans under the age of 30 years old um, don't know where is Auschwitz-Birkenau. So, yeah, this was, funny enough, my next question. I think the generation, my generation, I'm not German, but my generation, Ger uh, the post-war generation are very aware, uh, feel very guilty, if you like, and, it, it, and, and the museums are there in responsibility for what happened. But the new generation, you're saying, perhaps it's lessened. But it's bound, that's bound to happen, isn't it? As history, it's, well, it's, a, it's a long time ago. Why should... My kids, your kids, if they were, you know, why should they feel the responsibility? Um, I think responsibility in that perspective is something that is collective. I think responsibility because a nation defined as, it, as itself as a nation. And so everybody talks about the new Germany and everybody talks about the, the uh, European identity. So a part of the European identity is uh, responsibility of what happened in the history of Europe. Um, and for me, it is, it is a daily life situation. So I try to, uh, I try just to put this the next step into, into what is important for the daily life situation. And what is important for the daily life situation is that we have to disconnect this history uh, from what we called nationalism or for, from the national perspective, taking it to what we, what what is what is important for all of us is the human perspective, the human perspective of it. So I I don't think that this history have to be, you know, part only of what is the history of Germany. So it have to be part also of the history of Europe. It is it have something to do with every person, whatever he comes from, um, and if he comes up from uh, Arabic countries, I think it's something useful to know about the history of Europe. I want to uh, talk actually uh, about your work with Arabic, uh, Arab youth here um, in a minute, but first let's see another report. See what my report. guest makes of uh, this. There's plans here in Berlin for an interreligious prayer house where Christians, oh, yeah. Jews and Muslims can all worship and naturally interact with each other. Let's see it. You didn't know about that, I know. No. Uh, what do you first... think of it? Do you think uh, such a building can help? Well, this is the first time that I see the movie. Yeah. Um, um, so I get, you know, I get the impression that everybody want to be Druze. Uh, they, 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 yeah. They, they, it is just like you unity. Know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm there, and it's just over there, and it's been there for a thousand years, uh, and we've seen that these things are not new for me. So they're part of me already, and it's part of my tradition more than 1,000 years. Um, so it's for me, it's a good try, it's a nice try, it's a good thing, but I don't believe in buildings. You know, it's something very German, just let's have a building. And 
you know, there is Muslims and Jews and Christians who lives in Germany. What about the interreligious dialogue? Um, and you have enough churches and there is enough mosque and there's enough buildings where this, uh, where this uh, interaction could take place. So it's a nice initiative. I, I, I don't know. I think that in Berlin there is a lot of things that you could do. Um, but well, I want to refer. But I want to refer also mm. just just Sorry. a second because I've, I've heard something also, which was, was which was said in, in this in this movie that would would upset me. That really really upset me. Um, and it's there was an occasion of a rabbi that was attacked by uh, um, in Berlin by um, he said that um, the teenagers were um, they spoke Arabic, and um, uh, they didn't never been caught. And there is a kind of uh, anti-Semitism among uh, the Muslim minority. So the, we cannot ignore that. But if you compare it to anti-Semitism around Germany, it's a, still a small minority. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem that we have in, Ger in Germany is uh, a rooted anti-Semitism, a classical anti-Semitism that is still rooted in the majority. And, and, and from my opinion, it is wrong to present anti-Semitism as a problem that Muslims have. There is such a problem, but it's comparing to the, to the other problems of the, of the Christian majority, it's a very, very small problem. So it is mainly anti-Semitism is, is a problem of the majority. And it's not a problem of, uh, of the minority. Uh, and this is, this is a very important, a very, very important fact that is from all studies that are being done. You, you think there's still a lot of, a majority of anti-Semitism in this country still? I mean, if, 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 if people go and vote in the last election in Germany, uh, more than half a million people voted for the neo-Nazi party in Germany. And if there is a... But that's a small minority. Well, Excuse it's me. a small minority, but if there is a killing going on yeah. and, um, and there is a kind of racial profiling that is being done by, by the police forces of, to put up and define threat from a, from only from one group and, a, and, a, and not, not, not focusing also and taking this aspect to the whole majority, I think there is a, a think problem, a think process. Once defining anti-Semitism as a problem of the minority, of the Muslim minority, it's radical. Mm. And this is the situation that radicals use in France. But, but it does and They use it, I'm sorry, they use it also in Holland. And I think this is, it's a horrible thing yeah. that the Germans would go on with the same idea of uh, anti-Islamic uh, uh, perspective defining or presenting anti-Semitism as a problem of the Muslims. So I think it is, it is, have to be very careful with, with, the, with these words. Yeah, but we, you, one encounters it everywhere, really. In, it, it's not just, I mean, I'm, I'm quite surprised, you know, that you, you feel so strongly that it's Germany, you know, or, or are you saying this is all over Europe, really? Um, I think there is a kind of a growing up feeling of nationalism yeah. all around Europe. But they're and, very wary about nationalism here, much more than in other countries. Well, the development, there is no way to stop it. There, yeah. is, a, there is a growing up uh, political party in Germany who, who actually anti-European. And there is a growing up increasement of uh, dis, uh, disconnection between the political ideas and what is on the street. So politics is not, is not gapping with the, with the ideas of people that lives in, 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 uh, in, in Europe. So there's a political crisis and there's identity crisis in, in, in Europe and in Germany is part of Europe. And this identity crisis, from my opinion, it's very nationalistic. Okay. Um, we, I must move on. We could go on and on about this, but uh, I, I want to move you on because I want to talk about your voluntary work that you do, your little effort in Karame, we saw it in the film, uh, I, I wanted to talk about it earlier, but yeah. there have been too many fascinating things to talk about. You organize trips for young German Muslims to Israel. Now tell us about that. Um, What's the purpose? You know, I've also been criticized about that 
because some, some said, well, you're bringing up those Muslims who believe in the right of their turn and they want to re- come back to Israel and take, the, take our land. So there was a kind of criticize from some Israelis about this work. It is mainly that every person, and it's written in the Bible, should know where he comes from in order to know where he's going. Da me'ayin bata ve'le'an atahulech. This is the term, this is what is written in the Bible. This is a Talmudic tradition. It's rooted in the Jewish tradition. And it, which means like every person have the right to know where he comes from. Um, so it is something that, it's, it is something that I, I returned, I believe as an education and act. A person who knows, um, who knows uh, um, about the place would, and would interact with the place would, um, would become much more pragmatic because he had an experience. He had an interaction with the, with, with, the, with the society, with the people, with the place. It's going to be criticized. It could be actually a very positive thing, but there's a learning process going on. And one of these things is just like taking Germans uh, with a, a Muslim background uh, and um, dealing with the Middle East, not only Israel, but mm, it's just like okay. the whole Middle East, um, is um, open the door um, to, um, to have an interaction with it, it's not an idea anymore. And so it's not an ideal in the mind so that they have never practiced it with it. And this is, this is where actually radical views start. Radical views starts when people don't have an interaction. And that's why it is um, hatred to foreigners would develop in the places where no foreigners live there because there is a, no interaction. Okay. So... The, the, the idea is um, once people have an interaction with the place, um, if it's a political interaction, if it's a cultural or religious interaction, would, uh, would open for them more options to think about, um, about, uh, about the place itself and about the conflict. And, uh, um, and um, I don't think that they would leave Germany. Um, and it, uh, I mean, it's a, but it's, a, it's an ongoing process and it's very successful, I believe. Yes, it again, is. Again, yes. we have to move. <laughs> have to I move want again. to come now to the questionnaire, but we really have no time for that. We have to move that. again. But the one yeah. thing I would mention, because it leads into our, our, our last piece, is that your favourite place in, in Berlin is the Staatsbibliothek, or the Stabi, as it's known. And it's one of the most important cultural libraries in Europe, it actually two libraries, one in the western part of town, one in the eastern, and we're off to the east to the new reading room, which was recently remodelled. The new construction sits within a rather ostentatious 19th century building, built in the time of the last German Kaiser. The old reading room was a highly ornate domed building, reminiscent of a cathedral. Architect H.G. Merz says he wanted the new building to live up to that grandeur without overdoing it. Modern additions and woods in warm colours. The State Library makeover has transformed the building over the last eight years. The old reading room was destroyed in World War II, leaving a huge hole at the heart of the building. The destruction in the war suddenly took out the building's middle. The bombs hit the reading room and the center of the building was gone. So that's what we wanted to restore to give the building back its missing link. The State Library is home to such treasures as the original score of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. When Berlin was divided, part of the library's holdings were held in the west and part in the east, making the library an embodiment of German history. The facade exudes both grandeur and dignity. The interior is flooded with light. A cool blue contrasts with the warm yellow and red tones. One of the most successful features is high above the reading room. Semi-private rooms can be rented for solitary concentration or perhaps daydreaming. Little details break up the strict symmetry in this haven for readers, like the crumpled paper sculpture by Olaf Metzel. 
it's hard to recognize that Tobias Rehberger's object is a clock. There are only a few places where the old construction meets directly with the new. One of them is the Department of Rarities. Students thirsting for knowledge can now enjoy the tranquility of the new reading room in the old State Library in Berlin. Uh, one of my guest's favourite place, my guest is Samuel Schiedem. And a, a good place for research, no doubt. And I, I, I know you're writing a book about the Middle East. You've obviously got very lots of ideas and things to say you've been saying for the last 30 minutes or so. So what's your book? Um, it's mainly about um, the interaction of religion uh, with the state authority. So how state and, and religion defined and become uh, the dominant aspect of the state laws. Um, so it's about religious, the state, the religious state in the Middle East, and it's not only about one. So I'm taking a couple of states, comparing them together. So I'm taking also a kind of uh, uh, aspects of uh, taking a look on the, on the Jewish state and that definition of, uh, the common definition of defining Israel as Jewish. What does it mean and how does the, Jewish halacha um, influence uh, the laws, and um, I'm taking also uh, Sharia laws that is mainly uh, Shiitic Sharia laws, and uh, not only Shiitic but also Sunnitic. So um, taking Iran and Saudi Arabia into context. So what I'm getting from you is you're a very educated man, and the the the, the solution. Uh, you're saying, in, in, in a nutshell, is education, not politics, not religion, but education. I don't believe in um, in in, um, in, uh, an, in in an agreement as a, politi a political agreement. So it's it's something that the state have to do. Um, bring it up, bring it up an agreement is something that is state act. But I believe that individuals contribute to that by. Uh, uh, by understanding that peace is education and be active about it and and uh, every person have a right to know his neighbor um, mm -hmm. and I have the right to know my neighbors and the neighbors my neighbors have the right also on me so I practice actually what is unity uh, I practice that kind of unity I don't I don't um, I don't separate myself from any uh, and unity is something, and being Druze is something that you practice. It is a, it's a, it's a philosophy. It's a faith that mm. is, you could integrate it in, in your daily life situation. So, start practicing unity. This is, this is what is. Before we go, I want to mention your website, um, BerlinDoors.org. It's about to happen. What's going to be on there? It's, uh, basically, what you've been saying today. Um, not only, so there is a kind of a, a catching up to, to the things that I do, but it's offering universities and educational uh, institutions um, uh, another way to approach Berlin, because Berlin have a very huge uh, touristic uh, attraction and it's going on in Europe, it's like a lot of people coming into Berlin. I would like to have uh, uh, offer uh, for, for educational uh, institutions once they come to Berlin uh, to deal up with uh, not only the touristic perspective of, and the highlights of the city but going on to historical special issues and, 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 the, and the museums that I work with. So it's mainly about political education, cultural, cultural uh, education and uh, history. It's been fascinating, Samuel Shiden, talking to you. I've got a hundred more questions. We did. Thank you, I did think because you've had such a fascinating life, we could have gone on and on. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you for watching as well. Thanks to my guest. If you'd like to comment on this show or any anything to do with Insight Germany, write to us at insight at dw.de. A quick mention of your website is berlindoors.org. That's it. Until next week. Thank you. I'll have another fascinating letter. Bye-bye.